We are talking about trigonometry functions and graphs, lesson number three, trig ratios. The primary trig ratios are sine ratio, cosine ratio, and tangent ratio. These should have been studied in previous courses, but let's just review what those ratios are. We have a right angle triangle here with this as the reference angle. And when we look at this angle, this is the side that is opposite to that angle. And this side, the side that helps make the angle, is a side that we call adjacent or right beside. Adjacent means right beside. So the side that helps make the angle. Of course, this is the hypotenuse, the longest side. And you can see that that's the right angle there. So the sine ratio then, according to these definitions, then it's going to be the opposite side over the hypotenuse. For cosine, for this angle, we have the adjacent side over top of the hypotenuse. And for the tangent ratio, we have the opposite side compared to the adjacent side. These ratios are called the primary trigonometric ratios, and can re we can remember them, some people remember them by this acronym, SOCATOA, with the O being opposite, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now there's also reciprocal trigonomic ratios. When we have three sides to the triangle, if we were looking at an ordered ratio, then there would be six possibilities. And so we covered three already with sine, cos, and tan. And there's three more. There's cosecant, the cosecant ratio, so CSC, cosecant. There's the secant ratio, SEC, and cotangent ratio, cotangent of theta. So when we take a look at that, the cotangent of theta is actually when we take a look it's going to be the hypotenuse over the opposite, which is the reciprocal of the sine ratio. For secant, it's going to be the hypotenuse over the adjacent. Or in other words, it is the reciprocal of the cosine ratio. And of course, the cotangent ratio, the similarity is the it's going to be adjacent over the opposite, which is the reciprocal of 1 over, sorry, the reciprocal of the tangent ratio. Now let's take a look at why it is. So remember that the sine ratio is opposite over hypotenuse. So when we see 1 over the opposite of hypotenuse, when we divide by a fraction, we are actually multiplying by its reciprocal. So it's hypotenuse over opposite. And then you can see that this is the ratio. So the cosecant ratio is 1 over the sine ratio, and the secant ratio is 1 over the cosine ratio, the cotangent ratio is 1 over the tangent ratio. Now sometimes these names can be a little confusing, so one thing you can remember when we're talking about the definitions of each of these reciprocal trig ratios is that in this equation there's only one co-prefix in that whole equation. So for cosecant, ratio, the cosecant of theta, because we have a co there, then we can't have another co in this side. So it's cosecant theta is equal to 1 over sine theta. Secant theta is equal to, it can't be sine because there must be a co uh, prefix in there, so it's 1 over cos theta. And cotangent theta is equal to 1 over tangent theta. There's only one co in this equation. The primary and, and reciprocal trig ratios can be given in terms of x, y, and r. Let's take a look at this example here. We can use this diagram. Here's the diagram. There is a terminal arm. There's an angle. And we can see this is a radius right along here. That's a radius r. And we have y and we have x. So the sine of this particular angle, and it makes sense to look at this angle because we think of this arm rotating around this, this circle, perhaps. And we have this angle, so this angle, the sine of this angle is going to be the opposite, or the y, over the hypotenuse. But the hypotenuse here is really the radius of a circle, so this is r. Now, cosine of, of the angle is the adjacent, or x, over r. And the tangent of this angle is y over r. So what would be the cosecant of theta? Well, the cosecant of theta is the reciprocal of the sine ratio, so this is going to be r over y, 
The secant theta is going to be the reciprocal of the cosine, so that's r over x. And cotangent theta is the reciprocal of the tan ratio, so that's going to be r over y. Now these formulas should be memorized so that you can use any of these ratios along with their definitions in terms of either opposite hypotenuse and adjacent or using y, x, and r. Now some students like to use a phrase like seven yellow rabbits to remember that the sine ratio, the sine of theta is equal to y over r. So use whatever you like, but these, these formulas should be very familiar to you. Let's determine the sine of a trigonometric ratio. Here we have this chart here with a terminal arm and it's rotating around this coordinate system. And we want to draw the rotation angle and complete the table and do it for all of these. Now we know that the sine ratio is, is y over r. We know the cosine ratio is x over r. And we know that the tan ratio is y over x. However, as this terminal arm turns around this coordinates, these quadrants will change the values of x and y. And so a particular coordinate point, like this one, then the x and y may have a positive or negative value. And that will change the value of these ratios. So let's start in quadrant one. We'll say this is the first angle here. And of course, cosine of theta is equal to x over r and tangent of theta is equal to y over r. In this quadrant, the x coordinate is going to be a positive value and the y coordinate is also a positive value. So we result then with a positive value. Now for tangent ratio, the y value in this quadrant is positive. The r value is always positive. It's the radius of this, this line or this, that circle and that always has a positive length. So that's also positive. So it seems like all three of these primary trig ratios are positive in quadrant one. But if we take a look at quadrant two, the sine of theta is equal to y over r. In this quadrant, the y has a positive value here. This is a positive y. The r is also positive, so that is positive. So the sine ratio is positive in quadrant two. The cosine ratio is x over r. Now, if we think about oh, this, this is zero, zero. Going in this direction is a negative x value. And over top of a positive radius, this ends up being a negative value. The cosine is negative here in quadrant two. For the tangent ratio, we have y is a positive y. And over top, though, of an x value that is negative. So positive divided by negative is going to be a negative. In quadrant three, again, the ratios are still the same. It's y over r, x over r for a cosine. For tangent, it's y over x. And taking a look at quadrant three, we have a negative y value and also a negative x value. So we have a negative over a positive, which ends up being negative. We have a negative over a positive radius. That's also negative. And the tangent ratio, we have a negative y over top of a negative x and negative divided by negative ends up being positive. So the only ratio in this quadrant three that is positive is the tan ratio because we have a negative y divided by negative x. Now here we have, again, the sine ratio is y over r, the cosine ratio is x over r, tangent ratio is y over x. Here in this quadrant, we have a negative y value it's underneath the x-axis, so that's negative, or a positive radius, that's negative. The cosine is a positive x, or a positive radius, that's positive. The tangent is a negative y value over top of a positive x value. So negative divided by positive, that's a negative. So it seems like in quadrant four, the only ratio that's positive is cosine. Both sine and tan are negative. Now we're also asked to draw the angle in standard position. Remember that in standard position, you're starting off with the positive x-axis. So this is the angle there. And this is the angle here for this angle. In standard position, you start with the positive x. So you're going all the way around to there. That is the angle. And 
this angle is all the way around to this point. That is the angle drawn in standard position. The reciprocal trigonometric ratios follow the same framework as the corresponding primary ratio. If you were thinking about sine, if the sine, ra sine ratio was negative, then the corresponding cosecant ratio, which is the reciprocal, would also be negative. Let's complete the following statements using the information that we had from the graph. The sine ratios and cosecant ratios have positive values then in quadrant one. Remember that sine is y over r, and in the y values are positive in quadrants one and two. Cosine and secant ratios have positive values in quadrants one and four because the x values are positive in quadrant one and four. Tangent ratios and cotangent ratios are positive values. Remember that y over x, if both positive in quadrant one, and to get a positive value in quadrant 3, where y and x are both negative, a negative divided by a negative is also positive. So quadrant 3 is positive for tangent and cotangent. Sine ratios and cosecant ratios are negative where the y is negative. So that is quadrants 3 and 4. And cosine ratios and secant ratios have negative values in quadrants 2 and 3. That's where the x values are negative. Tangent ratios and cotangent ratios have negative values in quadrants where one of x and y are negative and the other one's positive. So that's quadrant 2, where negative x and positive y, and quadrant 4, with a positive x and a negative y. Now these results may be confusing, but you can use a memory device like what we call the cast rule, the cast, where if you start in the quadrant 4 and go counterclockwise, you say C-A-S-T, so cast cosine is positive, all ratios are positive, sine ratio is positive, and tangent is positive. Or you can use another memory device where you can start in quadrant one, say add sugar to coffee, and using the beginning letters, all, sine, tangent, and cosine. So in quadrant one, all of them are positive, sine is positive in two, in three, tangent is positive, and in four, cosine is positive.